Hey, how's it going YouTube? Thank you for stopping by, checking out our YouTube video. My name is Rick Ramirez. I'm also known as Rick's Two Cents. Uh, we're joining a live question and answers today for all of you guys with my co-host, um, Roger from Roger Shop and Steve from Steve Makes Anything and Conrad, the behind the scenes man who is our uh, monitor. So if you get out of line, he'll bump you. So don't do that. <laughs> so of course, these videos are for questions and answers. So the floor is open. It's an open mic to answer any question you have. You guys want to say something before we get started? Huh. Go ahead, Roger. <laughs> well, I, I've got a project coming up. How do you like this flag here? It needs a little work. Yeah, it does. What's That's the deal with you, that? Did you pass it through a lawnmower? It, uh, <laughs> this is actually goes on top of our boat. And okay. It, uh, it, it's a little worse for wear. So I'm going to make uh, probably three different ones and then interchange them through the year. All be uh, themed with rum, of course. Okay. Okay. That's a no, sublimation project. Yep. Nice the, well, you see, I could put the Jolly Roger up there because, ah. <laughs> and rum makes yeah. me jollier. You just got to be careful because last time you started talking about your boat, some guy like dropped in the comments where you lived. Like, whoa, calm down, stalker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a little weird. Yeah, that one kind of surprised me. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> hey uh steve uh i jumped sure. out of youtube earlier I, obviously i'm subscribed to all you guys you know so cool but i was jumped on youtube earlier this week and we had kind of talked offline uh outside of this video and i thought you did some interesting work with acrylic that was one of the things i said that i wanted to do um do you mind kind of sharing what you did and maybe i actually did a video on this one quite a while ago it's uh it's it's two color they're actually pretty easy to create. And it, 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 you end up getting kind of three colors because things like the text are actually engraved on, on both. There's two pieces of acrylic along the side here. The, it, the text is engraved on both sides, so you get the co color combination. So I don't know. You probably can't see it on screen, but these are actually kind of purple. Okay. It looks like blue and red. Yeah. Or is... Yeah. The ship and the guy standing in the beam are red, and the beam is blue. So, so, so I saw the original video. It's a, it's a cow, right, getting zoomed up by a. Oh, is there? I, I don't know. I just, I just grabbed a bunch of things and put them together. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I find myself using AI generation a lot more now, just because nice. I can't deal with the, any potential copyright issues. Nice. But one. this one, I, I took, I found the ship and and the guy doing this and. And just put the beam in myself. I didn't know there was a there was another one like it. I kept seeing one where it's like a it's like a, a cow being it's with an alien kind of, uh, and they're like sucking up the cow because you know like the, the people always say that uh, I don't know that that uh, aliens come and do weird things to the animals. I saw a similar image. It was like that, but could have been AI generated as well. But I thought that was pretty cool. So. Definitely, this one wasn't uh, AI generated. I just took a bunch of clip art and stuck it all together. No, nah, I think it's there. definitely cool. Yeah, so if you guys want to check that out, you're interested in making some acrylic, obviously that was on a CO2. Um, yeah, that one is. Uh, yeah, low look. Right, so you could go to his video, his, go to his channel and check that out. But uh, I thought that was a pretty good. Uh, I don't Roger, right. you've done, you've done a, you do a lot of uh, acrylic on your K40, right? I do quite a bit, too. I Mostly, I make unicorns, <laughs> but I have a market for them. I, you I don't can't make, make a statement like that without explaining yourself. <laughs> I don't make them just for the heck of it. I I have a customer that wants these uh, clear acrylic unicorns, and she buys quite a few of them from me. Okay. So it's so it's not like a different unicorn every day. It's just that's no, the same one all the time. Really? There you go. Hey, Steven. Same unicorn Robert. every time. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, I, I end up working with a lot of acrylic. I just I make a lot of signs and cut a lot of letters for people. It's it's easy money, really, because like you can cut a handful of letters out in, in five minutes. So So I've been really getting crazy into the 3D layering because of the uh challenge coins. And you know, Roger and I are both IBW. So uh, I talked to our local. And uh, I think I'll be able to make some challenge coins for local nine. 
So anyone oh, do you need to help? So that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I'll share that with you guys when I do it. I'm probably get started on it this weekend. But obviously, when you do anything that's union related, if you're touching their artwork, you better damn well get the approval of the union. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, they won't sue. They just might send someone to beat you up, right? <laughs> <laughs> they'll be the irish or italian probably you know <laughs> but uh but yeah so i got his blessings but of course i'm gonna send him one and make sure he's cool with it but um yeah that'd be pretty cool i'm pretty excited about that there steven likes the light they're really easy to make there's a I, there's a video on my channel i made that video i don't know probably a year ago maybe yeah it just came up in my news feed and i was on youtube and i, I watched i actually watched the whole thing was like, oh, it's pretty yeah. cool. I've, I've been doing a pretty a pretty aggressive tweaking of SEO. So things I noticed videos that I, I tweaked have been popping up a lot more. So a lot more views all of a sudden. And, and I know you've been you've been bugging me to tell you my little my inside secret. Yeah. So we'll have to have a conversation yeah. offline. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm still interested, but but yeah, my my uh, so my on YouTube SEO has has improved a lot yeah just yeah get, gets things out there a lot more oh, so hey guys you guys got any questions or anything you want to know about there's, us you know there's for a us question to answer you right here okay i hi i have a question i bought a anglisto laser 40 watt for my small business is this a good option what is your opinion mostly i'm gonna make engraving some cutting how about longer nano 6 12 watt okay so the forty well, uh, watt, the forty watts, a good choice for cutting, not quite as good for 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 engraving. Although Algo Laser does weird things with how they stack the the diodes in the in the module, so I I haven't seen the forty watt. I talked to them about it, but it's it's a a uh, what's the uh, Kickstarter? It's a Kickstarter project, so they they've it's been closed until they actually release. Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you have a nano, Roger? Can you comment on the on the nano? No, um, I know they have a a fundraiser going on right now with a nano. Yeah, and they, if they, they reach their them. if they reach their seven hundred thousand dollar goal, then I, uh, I think it's crazy seeing large manufacturers on Kickstarter. Like, wow! Like you you think of like mom and pop shops, you don't think of large manufacturers. It's a good way for them to get free free engineering, right? Well, oh yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing yeah. with that at all. I'm just you know, I, mean, I was just surprised to see it. Creality does it too a lot, and it yeah. just—I mean, that's a multi-billion-dollar company, and they do it. Well, X did it. it. Yeah, X did it with the S1. So actually, so they did I, it with the P2 too. too. I, I would say too to your question is it really depends on what do you plan on doing with it? Like, like, and what I mean by that is what is the material that you plan on using? You know, because like. <clears throat> I know we always say 20 watt is a sweet spot, right? You know, you want 20 watt at least because um, a five or 10 watt laser, not saying you couldn't do it, but you can outgrow it really fast. Um, but just <laughs> you go buy like a 200 watt laser and you're using 2%, like what's the point, right? So just, well, yeah. if you're engraving large things, like let's say porch signs or large signs, yeah, that'll work fine because you're not looking for extreme detail. You yeah. know, if you're just doing letters and that type of thing. Yeah, so let us know what you're engraving yeah. or what you plan to engrave or what you're Well, yeah, about. that's that's what I was going to say is engraving and cutting what, right? Because you're not going to cut that sign with a diode laser. Right. Um, but if you're doing wood or uh, black acrylic, you can do black acrylic uh, with a diode laser. Uh, you can in certainly engrave on stainless steel. Absolutely. But there are lots of things you can't do. So here's something I was looking to do. I just, oh. yeah, hey, oh, wow, All right, that, that, that's gotta go. So I just made this the other day, and it's probably the, the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, the Matrix is real. A glitch in the Matrix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the aliens uh, from your spaceship there are getting after him. Yeah, right, there you go. I got to get in front of it. So it's it's quarter inch material, yep. you know, wood and whatnot. And I was thinking about making something similar like this, but like candle holder. You put a candle inside and then use like a laser to uh, do fretwork, just to carve it out so it's a bunch of hollows. Um, I was going to take it over to the scroll saw 
this, do similar. Um, we'll but what size laser do you think would work? You know, light wood, something like. Um, You're trying to do an inlay. Um, not so much an inlay, but just cut all the way through. Oh, all the way well, through. And well, do an insert. Twenty or in? thirty watt. Twenty or thirty watt to do that. Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, carve through the material, kind of like. How thick is that? It's, it's a quarter, quarter inch. inch. Or, and uh, what is it? Is it is it softwood? Like is it pine or something? Uh no. It, this is um, uh, birch. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty hard. I mean, you'd get through it with a thirty watt laser, but you'd have to really fine tune the cutting. Otherwise, you'd end up with charcoal sides. Okay, yeah. So, so my, my suggestion is, and it's just from my personal experience, whenever I'm cutting through something. It's always been a cleaner cut and a better cut to just put masking tape over the top of it and cut through the masking tape. And the reason I say that is for one, um, that it doesn't, I don't have to remove as much of the residue from the black, right? From the cut. Yeah. And it does seem to cut better. And I won't go into details or I'll never make a video on it because I think Steve made a video that pretty much explains it the kerf. <laughs> um, Good old kerf. Right. Yeah. So, so basically, if you don't know what the curve is, is blowout, right? In, in lane man's turns. On yeah. the backside, what's your blowout like? So I think it helps with the curve, maybe because just the way the, the beam is hitting. I don't know. I, I don't know the, the science behind why it looks so much better on the backside, but I've had great luck using masking tape. Yeah, if you have good air assist, you won't get, you won't get soot on the front or back. Okay. I usually have some samples around here, but well, I I like to use like a real light woods, like a cedar, just a yeah. little tiny black charge, like just. And if you wipe it, it kind of like goes into it, and it's just a pain in the ass, and you're you're you're, you know, cleaning that yeah. up. If if the uh, if the wood is, I'd say a quarter inch, you probably want to do multiple passes that you'll get a cleaner cut. For sure. Okay. Like lower power and multiple passes. Yeah, he was trying some matrix weird things. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to put together a video on how to cut thick material without making uh, charcoal. HVAC guy, what's going on, brother? What's going on? I'm saving up for 40 watts. I don't have to upgrade too fast. Yeah, I don't see anything be... Well... I don't think I, I'll say I won't see I don't see anything realistic beyond 40 watts. Uh, Ike here has their 70 watt, but that thing has got to be practically useless at, at anything but cutting two by fours. OK, well, hold on, hold on. I think you need to rephrase that statement. On a, I would say that's true on the dial laser, not a CO2. Right. Yes. If this is the CO2, yeah, the bigger, the better. Right. For the same reason you, you like 40 watt is kind of the peak for 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 diode lasers, but 40 watt is entry level for CO2. Yes. And do people often um, confuse the, the wattage of the laser versus the power consumption of the unit? <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> well, that, no, well, that, that, Roger. People don't confuse it. Companies confuse people. Ah. Well, I, I don't think companies are confused. I think that they intentionally um, mislead customers right so that's what i said companies confuse people right right Ro um, roger they, roger is known for correcting that <laughs> yeah they don't do that as no. much anymore I, I haven't seen any any reputable companies quoting the input power anymore yeah i've, I've heard roger i could probably make 100 clips on her we're at this is video number 10 by the way this is awesome we're on video number 10. sweet it's I, an anniversary i, I get that anniversary. comment so many times you know hey i'm looking at a 120 watt diode laser but no you're not <laughs> 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 yeah, for sure. Hey, Jack in the shop. So I was testing this. Uh, I got into a bit of a spat with XTool this week. Nice. Uh, yesterday, actually. Um, so I'm building this, or I'm testing this P2, and I, I cut this this ruler. Looks fantastic. Nice. Except. The 30 millimeters is not 30 millimeters. It's or 300 millimeters. It's, it's 298 millimeters. So I, I sent a message to them and said, hey, you got to allow me to calibrate your laser. And, and she said, why? I said, well, I said, I cut a piece that's th 300 millimeters long and it's 
on paper. And when I cut it, it's only 298. And her answer, I, and I will never forget this as long as I live, her answer was, well, it's only two millimeters. I said, okay, ordinarily, if I'm just cutting some arbitrary thing, a box, two millimeters over 300 is nothing. I said, the problem is I was cutting a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> so in fairness, yeah, in fairness the purpose. To, I, said to, I said to them, is there a way to calibrate your laser? And, and she said, well, no, not right now. I said, okay, this is a, a huge hole in, in, your, in your, wow. your product line. Because you can't, I know you can't do this on an X tool. When I did, I, I did a checkerboard video a while back, and I kind of poked at it a little bit because I purposely used the D1 Pro, and I had to calibrate it, but then pointed out that you can't save that calibration value back to the laser. But I had to use Lightburn to do it, and and I ended up talking to uh, one of the one of the guys in the engineering team, and he said, "What do you want to do?" I said, "Okay, so go to Lightburn, open the machine set or the device settings, and I said, look at the thing where you can calibrate the laser. I want that." Right. But the but the uh, the marketing person was like, "Ah, well, you know, what's the big deal?" I said, "Okay, so this laser is five thousand bucks." Yeah. I said. I said, I don't know too many people who will be happy paying $5,000 for a laser, knowing that for 250 bucks, they can go on Amazon and buy a laser that they can make more accurate than this one. And that's when I got pointed over to the engineering team. So if, if this, if this feature suddenly pops into, into X tool, and I told them, I'd be happy to help you test this. Right. Because I said, a lot of the things I do require accuracy. And let's face it, it's a laser. We use them because they're accurate. If I just yeah. want to be within two millimeters, I'll use a coping saw, right? <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll see if, if you see it pop up. Hey, that was me. I helped. <laughs> nice one. But this I didn't call like it out in the you, review Roger. video. Yeah, I, just started off. I, know who that, I know who that is because he's been here. He's one of the rare people who's got to see my shop. I start off what how do you say that zoom zoom Zubetu. I start off with a Zubetu 10 watt uh, diode that Roger sold me and now I have three more in a hundred watt CO2. I blame mm -hmm. Roger for my obsession and it's just that's my budget. Thanks, Roger. Yeah, we do thanks for helping us. <laughs> if you're still married, you could thank him. <laughs> if you get divorced, you could tell him he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely becomes an obsession. I think that the reason that so many, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the reason once you own one laser, you own more, is because you learn more, right? And you, you, if you're a driven person to be able to, to do something bigger and better, you then you need the bigger and better machine. It's not like you got to have the the biggest laser on the block. It's just that you you outgrow it, just like kind of like a bike, right? You can out outgrow a motorcycle. I think you can outgrow a laser. Well, it depends on the materials too. If you suddenly want to work with clear acrylic and you've got a diode laser, you're going to buy a CO2 pretty quick. Right. But I think right. you're if you first... want to engrave challenge coins, you're going to have to have a fiber laser. Right. right. But I think when you first, your logic of thinking when you're first getting the lasers is like something. And then when you start going like the aha moment, like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> Everything just changes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a slippery slope for sure. Yeah. Looks like we got a lot of people coming from different places. Do us a favor, comments in the comments below where you uh, join us from. Let us know when you're uh, joining us from. Westerville, Ohio. I've been through Westerville, Ohio. I won't say I've been to it. I've been through it. So I'm coming to Canada, by the way, brother. Oh, sweet. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Quebec. Oh, I'm you're, almost, to... you're almost close. Yeah, so I'm spending three days in Canada. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, to um, the falls. Niagara Falls. I used to live there as a kid. Yeah. And then I'm going to Statue of Liberty. That's not and, in Canada. I, well, on the Canada <laughs> side. Dude, I'm At least I'm it Canada. wasn't the last time I saw it. Well, you can be on both sides. Oh, well, no. The Statue of Liberty is not in Canada. But Niagara Falls, I'm, I'm going to be on the Canadian side. Yeah. And then I'm going are. to the Statue of Liberty. And then I'm going to Ground Zero. Do you see the oh, Empire yeah? State Building? So I'm going to take some PTO and uh, go on a road trip with my family. So it'll be pretty cool. 
Well, if you're in if you're in uh, Quebec, make sure you order some some good beer because you know they have beer that'll <laughs> put your Modelo to shame there for sure. It's like three beers you'll, and one. You need to you need to drink four of those things you're drinking too <laughs> yeah. uh, to make up for one can of this stuff. <laughs> If I call you all drunk, you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have beers here that are like 10, 11%. It's like a glass of wine, right? That's crazy. Well, that's what we used to have Ice House. We used to have Ice House was like that. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember Ice House. <laughs> I got, got some bad memories of that one. <laughs> Ice House was, whew. Remember when they stopped doing it, went back to the middle of the light. It was like I could drink a case of beer. <laughs> Plenty. Yeah, so you guys got any upcoming projects or anything? <clears throat> you're going to be working no. on or showcasing no, got, your channels i'll be back i've got something running right now i gotta go check it so so he has a project <laughs> he's not going to tell us what it nice is one. uh geez yeah i've got a lot of things going on right now i have some cnc work to do tomorrow um guy lives not too far from me actually he's he's been engraving uh well he doesn't have a CNC, so he's been he, he's been using mine to engrave these big, like it's a whale basically made out of. He tends to use things like olive wood and stuff, and he brings this like multi hundred dollar piece of wall of, of olive wood and plunks it down on my CNC and says, "Can you cut a whale out of this?" It's like, yeah, where's your insurance <laughs> policy? Jeez. <laughs> uh, so I won't mention the company name, but I'm pretty sure you have one an all orange enclosure. Completely see through. I do not. I declined. Okay, so they <laughs> asked me, and yeah. I thought it was funny because then it was like the scratch uh, stuff that you had kind of did on your channel. Yeah, because I think they saw me do the video with the um, laser laser bowl leathers. Yeah, I think they probably watched mm -hmm. this this uh, stream too. Yeah, uh, because I know they watch all the videos on my channel now yeah they're actually sending me they said they have something something else so they're going to send me something else too they said the enclosure the scratch material and oh, yeah so. i i didn't i just i'm not a fan of those enclosures i don't know do you have one of those uh all all plexiglass enclosures roger yeah the great carve the the yeah. orange one yeah, yeah. It, it's fine. It, it, it's, I it's said I'm going to mention the day we get out there. <laughs> it's like the, it's the, uh, the great car enclosures. It's a good enclosure, but it is the IKEA of laser enclosures. It took okay. me over an hour to put that together. There's 98 nuts and bolts to put in. Oh man! Yeah, except except that you still ended up having a bunch of spare parts at the end, right? Well, fortunately, they, a lot of the Chinese manufacturers now are throwing extra hardware in. Uh, I, I know why, because, you know, let's say you get a nut and bolt and one of them is missing a thread or something. Well, then they have a tech issue. So now they just throw extra hardware in. Yeah. H hence why my CNC is not yet put together. <laughs> one of these weekends, I'll do it. Yeah. I've been, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. So with these enclosures, is there a, a minimum size, a maximum size? So get through um, volume. Let's see, take it. Well, I mean, they most of them are. So most of the lasers are. They tend to be in around the four hundred by four hundred millimeter range, four fifty tops. Um, so they make an enclosure for that. It it becomes a problem when you get extension rails. Yep. Um, so you end up not either not being able to buy an enclosure or making your own. Sometimes they have them. I think. Uh, I don't know if X Tool ever had a, an enclosure for the extensions on the D1 Pro. A Tezzer made one for the extension rails, and people got it and said it didn't fit. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, saying, they said they said I said okay, hey, I got the extension rails, I got everything. Where's the enclosure? Oh, uh, people yeah, are saying it doesn't fit. A, a fire in an acrylic yeah. enclosure would be a big deal. But yeah. I never, with the exception of what I'm doing right now, and if my lasers are running just in the next room, making these. Ceramic tile? Yeah, these are ceramic tile. And if I can get it, there we go. Yeah, you got them. And I have to make 100 of each of these. And they're going in the bathroom of a bar on the wall. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. And That's cool. 
This started uh, out a couple years ago. A guy ordered like 10 of them from me, and then he ordered like 25 more to use as a the upper border of the tile in his bar bathroom. And I've been to the bar and seen them. It's kind of neat. Well, that's somebody cool. else got wind of that, so they wanted 100 of each of those designs. So that's what I got cranking back in the next room. Yeah, so so I, I, my opinion on the enclosures is it's pretty much what Steve said, that the enclosures are nice that the manufacturers provide because they're uniquely made for the size of the lathes that they're selling you, right? But a lot of the manufacturers, even the ones that are selling the extended rails, they don't offer the extended enclosure. So that kind of sucks. And I think it definitely is awesome so that uh, – check that out. Thank you, Steve. Uh, it's definitely nice to have a fireproof enclosure, and I think we mentioned this before. Um, but like the a tether was fireproof. It was FR. Roger and I were FR every day, right? Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Lines, you know, you know we're, we're linemen, so we I've were got FR a, every day. I've got FR jeans on right now, and I'm retired. Oh, right. I've so still got them. I've still got them. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please, please keep those on. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, hey, you know. Kirby. So, so, so oh. the, the idea of being FR, so in the event of a fire is nice, right? For sure. But like the longer V1 laser, and I'm going to start an argument, and I know Steve's going to chime in. He's going to start the class one argument. But um, the longer B1 laser enclosure, the laser is awesome, but I just don't like that the fact that, one, it's rubber. So if there was a fire, it's like, whoa. And two, I don't like the fact that it has a bottom. I would like it to just have no mm. floor. Those those rubber those things that feel like rubber it's actually pretty fire retardant that stuff that material. That's a silicone. Um, yeah. Uh, so, but the thing is, it it definitely doesn't turn it into a class four laser. No, I'm saying that uh, by not having a floor to be or able a class to have one a pass really. through, have yeah. a pass through. Well, even just the enclosure by itself is doesn't make it a class one. Okay. So are the enclosures more for? Uh, containing the the fumes and then uh passing them out or is it to block Pretty much light from ambient in the rest of the room if you yeah, were in a we'll garage with the, yeah if you were in a garage with the garage door open and on a nice summer day who cares yeah when but the weather's doing... nice when the weather's nice i'll run three or four lasers with the shop doors open no right. enclosures right but if you're inside your house bad idea yeah i wouldn't do it in the house Okay, so okay. We, we, ventilation and maybe a, a blow to uh, clear the around the laser itself from the cutting point. Where did he go? Oh, we, we we need to find out why Cor Corby's torturing himself. I think because he wants a laser and he's here's all the lasers. Oh, stuff. that's right. Yes, he did mention he, he he's on my channel. Uh, <laughs> he did mention that uh, that he he was looking for a laser. It's too bad you didn't live close, man. I I, I give you one for either free or cheap. Yeah. I got a fireproof enclosure. The fire alarm is in my laser so sensitive, so I switched it off. Yeah, there is there is multiple settings on most of these these fire detectors. You can set them to less sensitive without actually turning them off. And you absolutely don't want to try to use your laser in the sun where the sun's shining on it if you've got one of those detectors because it'll trip it. Yeah. Found that out the hard way. So I, I cut a tree down uh like a month ago and i've been cutting it up the last four weekends every sunday i've been cutting it up but the base of one of the trees is like three and a half feet wide so i want to cut like as big of a slice out of it and put my laser on it and make a chessboard so that's an upcoming project i think it's gonna be kind of cool but i'm looking for if anyone has any cool amazon finds or any kind of cool finds i'm looking for some cool looking legs I want to cheat on the legs. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll go to town on the table, finishing it, flattening it, all that. I want you to got, cheat on the legs. You Just got a Hobby Lobby for... by you? Yeah. Hobby Lobby's got all kinds of interesting things like that. You can even go cast iron if you get in the right department. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can yeah. Use find, my find a legs for like making my kitchen tables and side tables. Yeah, that's find, that's find a wood turner or a, uh, or a, a welder. Yeah. You got yeah, I want to sit on the lights. You must have I guarantee you there's one within five miles of you for sure. Because <laughs> they're everywhere. I'm listening. Where do you live? <laughs> 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 well, you have to come to the east coast of Canada. 
<laughs> Too funny. More and more people jumping in live. Thank you guys. Thank you for all joining us today. Like I said, open mic. This is the question to answer. You got questions. You got questions. We got answers. Let us know. Michigan. 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 We're about to get some snow up there. I was watching yeah, the weather warning a little bit ago. It's actually trying to snow here, but it's it's above freezing, so I'm just watching it go by my my camera, my outside <laughs> camera. It's like, yeah. Nice one. It's March. Ah, well, what else is going on? Oh, that's a new blank. Oh, I've been meaning to send that guy a message, actually. To, to uh... I'm going to finish this video. It'll be, it'll be pop I'm going to post it this weekend. What I did is I went through. He basically gave me every hot selling item on his website. But I went through it, but I'm slicing the video up so that someone can click on the timeline, right, and then bring you to it. So if you're looking yeah. for... So you're putting chapters like, in. Yeah, yeah, but it's just a pain. It takes forever. <laughs> Oh, sorry. We both hit at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Western Canada. Western Canada is okay because I don't have to make customs or anything, or you don't either. The one thing I think it's crazy about Canada versus United States is like the density population. When I you know what I mean by that is there's so much vast land that it's just like still. Well, well you know, country. you can spread out here. No, I'm just saying that in the United States, Illinois, but when you go by us, man, right, Roger? Like. 20 years ago is a different story, but you, you, man, everything is just so being built up here. Yeah, well, yeah. If, if you want to get away from it all, drive across Nebraska. Yeah. yeah. It is so weird. Like, I own, like, the in the area that I live in, I own, like, the last big chunk of land. And it's, like, odd, you know, because people have a quarter acre or less. Oh, <clears throat> uh, oh, uh, now I got to bring this up. You know, we, we, and your we, geese. So, so I do get kind of tired of being blamed for terrible weather in the U.S. Because and smoke. You know, uh, well, yeah, we have smoke, <laughs> only because we have a lot more trees than than you do. But, but we're not responsible for your weather. At least not uh, not me, because I live two miles from the Atlantic Ocean, so my weather's very different than the rest of the country. Yeah, but you guys caught on fire and bring us all the smoke. That was pretty wild. Yeah, there was actually a fire in in my neighborhood. Uh, like I I live across the street from an elementary school, and I see this helicopter flying over about fifty feet above the ground. Mm. And a couple summers ago, and I went around the corner of my house, and I had a look, and I just see this big plume of smoke coming from behind the school, and this helicopter was dropping water on it. It's like, holy cow! Pack our stuff. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Time to run. But there was a fire about. Uh, I don't know, probably 20 miles from me, 20 or 15 miles that that uh, burned several thousand acres. Like it was reasonably big. That's crazy. What would the shipping and something be like on that? Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> send, just send me a message. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so here you go. Yes. Yeah, so, so if you watch that that Oak Island show, it's Constantly. actually it's actually filmed about an hour from where I live. No way, bro. Yeah. I love that show. Only thing that kind of pisses me off is like they, they like spoiler on these. We discovered something. You're like, oh, cool. I'm gonna watch it. It's like a piece of claw. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's like, why do you watch this show? I'm like, I don't know. They keep digging. Eventually, gonna find something. It's been on for like ten years too. Like it's just like if you were gonna find something, you would have found it by now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I think it's just think it's the aha moment that people think that they might find and what could be there. And well, the thing the thing I keep I, I'm I'm continue to be astonished about that show is they they're down digging down like 160 feet looking for a treasure that was buried in the 1700s. Well, right. what do you think they didn't have like a backhoe or dynamite in the 1700s, right? So how do you think they dug it dug that hole? Dude, I, I think that we're not as smart as we think we are, that we reinvent the wheel. We have reinvented the wheel, so to speak, more than once. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. What's that? What's that uh that astronomical thing that they found in, in Greece from like 
5000 BC and they, and it looks like a like a computer like a like a yeah. uh, com, uh, a navigational computer like an astrolab kind of thing yeah i saw that too with the the watch with all the gears you've seen that yeah. one it's like this yeah it's yeah. On top this yeah yeah that's crazy yeah i would i would love to go there i know you wouldn't see anything but if you could go there with like a tourist thing and i think they do they open it up every every now and then so many times a year uh oak island you mean yeah yeah they have tours yeah i think that'd be cool i have not i have not gone in in the true spirit of living close to something interesting i i I, i'm not i never go well i see unfortunately i i I did that too often in my life i lived in colorado and and denver and i never went skiing right i lived in new york and new jersey i never saw statue of liberty you know like what the hell my parents were horrible they didn't take us to do things (laughs) but uh you know uh, as 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 an adult now i want to take my kids to experience things i guess where i lived they are up from the up of michigan all right roger you got to show everyone your beer what are you drinking roger oh let me throw it up here some of these viewers might know what this is how many people know what that is <laughs> a can of beer Goose Island 312. Yeah. So I, I remember before when you used to not have to dial all the area codes. Not to dial your code every number you call. <laughs> he said it's yeah, a can. can. <laughs> hey, those beer cans are great to, uh, if you're just learning how to use a rotary on your laser, beer yes. cans are great to practice with. If they're a painted beer can, because you can, uh, and you're not going to cut through it, and you're, and if it's full of beer, you're not going to blow it up. So it, they're just great things to practice with. Yeah, Maybe I usually can, just put a piece of blue tape on them. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can help offline controller of a 440 Pro and the MPG mm-hmm. hand wheel controller. What's the difference? You guys, know what he's talking about? Not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Apparently- have- have an offline controller for my uh my 4040 i do have one for my 3018 but i don't like it yeah i'm supposed to get one for the 30 for the 4030 well now it's a 6060 but um to remind them i just looked at it and went eh, you know i do have a really nice hand controller for my onefinity i got a friend that wants me to engrave mirrors for his home i got any tips there you go engrave on the back yeah you can engrave on the back if you have a dial laser you can you can just engrave the the silver off the back yeah just uh have just, a sacrificial piece right yeah and make sure you got something underneath there because uh, don't do it on the dining room table or you'll have right. that engraving on the dining room table because yes. it'll pass and, right through that glass right yes. but i'd also have to say there's a difference between uh, dollar tree mirrors and like mirrors right it's like glass and there, there's a whole different well there's also right. the dollar tree mirror is probably not flat <laughs> so you know you always look a little weird in in those those dollar store mirrors yeah, well, yeah some yeah. of those are, are like mylar with a plastic coating over them there you go the yeah. silver backing yep. that's it the grill yep. master yep i don't Perfect. have plugged yeah. in right now um this doesn't have a very long cord on it. Get this plugged in. Oh, disco. Nice one. Are those fairy lights? Yeah. Nice. Sweet. I did the fairy lights on that Christmas tree build. I don't know if you guys saw that build I did. I guess Daniel stole that design from someone else, and then I stole the design for him. Each time the design kept changing, you know? <laughs> that's called a, That's called improvement. Yeah. <laughs> they sell both uh these are the controllers are... yeah yeah i don't know why they have two honestly on a on a cnc that size i don't know why they have one actually but yeah i've been seeing see people do the, uh the controllers on the fiber lasers and they have like those shortcuts and all it is is just uh light burn like moving the image over have you seen that? 
It's like a, it looks like a oh. keypad. It's oh, like, like, a, like, 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 hang on, let me see if I can get this out of here. Like, oh, I guess I'll have to unplug it. Like this, like a Stream Deck. Yes. Yeah. They're actually a Stream Decks originally started so that so that uh, Twitch people could could have quick switching from like multiple cameras and 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 whatnot, right? Uh, special effects and stuff. But Stream Decks are actually just a big global macro switch, right? So you can control them to do anything. Like I, when I'm recording, I have one button here that turns on my whole recording stack and uh, and starts recording. It turns on my lights. It does everything. So Nice. I have a homemade stream deck. Yeah, whatever works. Yeah, the stream deck is definitely overkill, let's face it. But it was uh i got it it was on sale one day and i i got a discount on it so i couldn't resist on sale for two grand <laughs> no these things are actually reasonably reasonably cheap they have the small one i think is like 100 bucks nice one yeah no i, yeah, I seen it was only like cheap, not cheap <laughs> yeah i see the ones it was only like four or five buttons the smaller ones they were using yeah yeah i think there's yeah. six or something on them yeah yeah two rows of two rows of three i think yeah so that's cool. Yeah. Hey, but I just want to thank everyone for joining our lives. Our lives have been growing. I've been kind of steadily seeing <clears throat> our lives grow, and not just necessarily when we're on the live, but even the even the views after the live. And I've even been watching that, um, you know, where it's coming from. And we've been getting a lot of views in Australia. A lot of views in Australia, which is crazy because I haven't seen anyone in the comments comment from Australia. But I've been seeing people watching us from Australia. So I, I have a I have a, a member from uh, Tasmania. And he sends me pictures every once in a while. Tasmania looks like a great place. I really want to go. Yeah. I can't go to Australia, I heard. You know, no. Australia's on my bucket list, but the, the wife doesn't want to take any flights that long. Yeah, it is a long trip. I told her, I said, we could stop at Tahiti on the way, or Fiji, or no, too long. I have a hard time getting her flying to Mexico. That's not that far. Yeah, my wife's French-Canadian, and when the the whole um cartel war start we went to puerto Vallarta every other year since we're 17 years old and the cartel war start started and she's like we're not going to mexico blah 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 yeah when upgrading so, to a palm router on a cnc unit yeah, how long so, can i expect the bushes to last in the palm router uh you know long time really long it's, time yeah it's a long time to wear brushes out it really does yeah Unless you're a, lot of the, a lot of the trim routers that are uh, are headed towards uh, brushless now too. So yep, in case of buying the right one, right, buy a Dewalt or something, and you're probably going to get a brushless one. I would say that if you ran it out, you must have made a lot of money, right? Is that fair? Yeah, it's end of life, you made a lot of money with. Yeah, it. well, certainly <laughs> if you used it to to on on money paying projects, you're probably you probably won't weep too hard when it dies. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Brushes are actually really easy to replace, and they're cheap. There's a, a DeWalt. I know a DeWalt has a uh, location not too far from us, uh, Roger, that you can take them and get repaired. Yeah. Brushes, brushes are easy. You can repair them. There's, uh, there's a place in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, it's, uh, Acme Tool. Okay. If you're in a DeWalt or Milwaukee or Makita, that's a toy store. I did a video on that, a uh, clandestine video, because they didn't want me shooting video in the store, but I did it anyway. Did it with my phone and posted <laughs> it, but that, that's quite the place. Don't record the kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't record any people. I was careful not to do that. But Hey, I also, guys. I... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I also had to keep the phone hidden all the time because they were watching me. What do you think <laughs> about those glasses? You guys seen those glasses, the Ray-Bans? Yeah, Clack, Clack has a set now. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. I, you know, I don't know. It seems gimmicky to me. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to tell everybody is that we did, um, we had our lives on Fridays at 630 and we got a message saying that, hey guys, uh, in the summer months that Fridays being homebodies, not really doing much because it's cold sitting home. Uh, it's probably actually an enjoyable time to just kick back review with us and bullshit and talk with us or learn and whatever, conversate. But in the summer months, people become more active and doing things with their family and friends. It may be suggested that we move it from Friday. So we moved to Thursday. 
And then after we moved to Thursday, I think we kind of missed some of our followers because they may have not have understood that we changed it. And we've done a poll so uh, we can collectively uh, make a statement. But my poll said that we should make it Wednesdays. So uh, I don't know if you each want to chime in on what Wednesday was. And anyone who's in the live now, what do you think that if we were to make it a Wednesday? When you guys want to jump in, let me let me just look at my uh, at my latest poll here while we're while we're talking. And that poll is what I never got around to doing. I just got too busy here. Yeah, mine was Wednesday by far. Yeah, Wednesday is definitely uh, definitely the the time. So so next week we didn't want to change it this week because we didn't tell anyone. So next week we'll have it on Wednesday at six thirty, and that will be our new time going forward. So just so everyone's aware. Based on popular demand. Yep. Your Harbor Freight Palm Router is on my long, long meal for three years. Still use it, but I, gotta make I, it I, brought, I brought this one up. I was actually going to ask how the long mill was. That's another good Canadian company, by the way. They're the guys who build a uh, um, G sender. So I think, too, the more money you spend on some equipment, it may necessarily not perform better, but it'll be quieter, right? And it's more durable. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. Once you're down, especially on a CNC, if you're engraving, uh, you know, something three-dimensional into a piece of wood, once you're down sub-millimeter, you're probably as good as you're going to get anyway, right? So, right. Um, I, you know, it's just, it, it, at that point, it's just durability, right? Like, I have a Onefinity, but that Genmitsu 66, now it's a 6060. Um, it it works just as well, like from a precision standpoint, as my Onefinity for a fraction of the price. A third well, on, this, price. on this question, a, a spindle and a router are really not the same thing. Do you want to uh, explain they're, the they're, difference? They're made completely different. Of uh, A router is actually not meant for continuous duty. I mean, like on for hours and hours and hours at a time, and a spindle is. It's just yeah. the way it's they're constructed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, so I actually, I have a spindle on my CNC and one of the reasons I put it on there is because it's a heck of a lot quieter and I do jobs that take hours sometimes. But you guys yeah. didn't use the the one you guys modded yours and upgraded for what came with your CNC, correct? Well, yeah, my well, CNC didn't come with any. Oh. And you could buy either a, you can put a trim router on it or you can put a spindle. I have an 80 millimeter spindle. Roger, did yours come with a router? No, I uh, mod my Analex I modified with the uh, router from Carbide Create, which is kind of made for their CNCs, but I didn't buy their CNC. And then uh, my 4040 Jinmitsu, I'm going to put a uh, palm router on from Lowe's of all places because they had them for 40 bucks. Nice. So couldn't pass that up. So you buy two, and when when one of them goes bad, you just replace it. I did buy two for 40 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife gets mad that I do that all the time. And I'm a DeWalt yeah. guy. So having something that's cobalt is like foreign around here, but. Still the DeWalt tough books. <laughs> yeah. This one, uh, this one, uh, Corby, this is a, uh, most likely it's a one finity. They make a wall mount version of it. So you can actually stick it on the wall and it, and it, it works while it's hung, hanging vertically. Well, that would take care of the sawdust. I just fall straight down. It also the, takes care of freeing up some floor space. Isn't that like how like Home Depot saws are? <laughs> that's yeah. That's how they're how they're cut <laughs> saws are. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I mean, it's it's not if you have wall space, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. A good spindle is going to be up there. You're several hundred dollars. Yeah, I mine actually I got mine on Amazon. It was uh I think two two hundred and fifty US somewhere in around there. Um nice. now mine is a bit of a an oddity. It's a it's a two point two kilowatt spindle, but it's only 110 volt, 120 volt. Um so you need a 20 amp circuit on that puppy or it's it's not gonna run. But True. most spindles are two twenty volt. And those ones do tend to be a little bit more because they're thanks across. He made it himself. 
<laughs> no, actually, I didn't. I've had this cross since so I was. So you have to get into that habit. When somebody says, hey, I like that, you just say, well, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to get, and we'll see, we'll see, a 100 watt uh, fiber laser because I saw them make this video when they were making jewelry, like this cross. Yeah. You just go, and I was like, oh my God, I got to have that. And they looked, and I just commented on the video, like, oh my God, I got to have that. Yeah, I think so, Monport has one, or is it Monport or Commarker? Somebody has one that's like reasonably cheap, actually. Again, reasonably watts? is a relative term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over five grand means reasonably cheap. No, I think they're more like like eight or nine. Yeah, that's I said over five grand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but a five grand one is like a fifty watt, right? Yeah. There you go. The hundred watt JPT. Yep. Yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. So you have one, Jack? Yeah, it's good. What do you make with it? That's my question. Are you making jewelry? What What do you What do you utilize a hundred watt laser for? You're not going to light burn and doing three <laughs> percent. The envy of all the kids on his block. <laughs> He's like, look what I did, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried to cut a piece of paper? No. Yeah, try it. No, I have not. Yeah. Di diode laser or uh, fiber lasers don't really do much to paper. Now, a 100 watt one might, but but <laughs> certainly a 20 or 30 watt one just won't touch paper. Yet it can engrave a hole through a piece of aluminum. Oh my God, I have to have that. That sounds like every comment I have on Steve's videos. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've, 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 I've come to enjoy Corby's comments on my videos. <laughs> it's like, how do I get that? <laughs> he says, uh, I bought a 30 watt Rakus. Yep, that's what that is. Or oh, the other yeah. one right there. And I did, I, I did not like it. So I put a 100 watt J. So that's a 100 watt. This is a 60 watt. Ah, I'm getting all confused in that. This is a 60 watt JTP on this solar. Yeah, I this like was, he, he did an upgrade to a 100 watt. On the same one that's crazy how'd you find how'd you find room in the box for that well i guess if it's if it's a rakus one it, the box is probably on the side right well my no my rakus is look is yours is yours the controller underneath no you're no you're, I mean, the, your controller's that, on the floor right that, this is the 30 watt rakus oh okay this is the this is the jtp on the enclosures yeah, that's the that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have a hard time to get a hundred watt in that box. I'm, yeah. I'm betting he put the box on the floor and left and left that box empty. There was some MacGyvering, I'm sure. Oh no, his is a side <laughs> tower. There you go. Yeah. He did some MacGyver. That's why the same thing with the UV lasers. They have uh these uh, external coolers, kind of like we're used to with the CO two lasers. So I'll start I'll by saying a... I'll start by saying I hate this kind of question because it's like, well, you told me to buy it and it's terrible. It's like, <laughs> well, um, should I buy it? so if you don't like the F1, you probably don't like two watt IR lasers, which means you want something a little more powerful or a lot more. If you're looking for entry level, com marker B4 20 watt is not bad, but you're not gonna. You're not going to do what Rick's doing with his coins <laughs> with that, right? And we're gonna we're gonna sound like a broken record with this, but at the end of the day, it's like, why do you want a laser? What do you plan to start with, right? Because when you start with one, you're gonna all of a sudden grow your skill set, and you're gonna end up with three different kinds. You're gonna end up one with a CO2. You're gonna end up with a diode. End up with a fiber. You're gonna you're, you're gonna end up with three. Yeah. Now, just now start budgeting for it now. Yeah. <laughs> which brand or which one you choose? But you end up with three different types. One of our subscribers sent me this long-winded email, and we're like, went in all these things and said like, um, what he wanted to buy, what he wanted to make, and what could he buy. And I said, you need two lasers. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in my shop, I guess yours is probably not much different, Roger. Well, it, disregard the P2. I have an S1, I have my CO2, and I have the fiber laser in between them. 
There you go. Less and than six case hours. Of, I, got, I got this kind of material and I have this job to do. Which one of these lasers am I, am I going to use? Oh, that one works best, right? Right. I, I do that. I have a specific one set up just, for example, these ceramic tiles I'm doing right now. I've got two lasers set up just to do those. Nothing else. Another one set up for just for coasters. I got one just for port signs. And of course, then I got my monster laying against the wall over here with that 850 millimeter square work area. And when I what break laser, that out, what laser is that? That's a longer Ray 5 with a maximum oh, extension kit on it. Yeah. So Steve said Roger has about 15 lasers. So cool. But actually, I agree that Roger has a lot of lasers, but he is the king of. What what are you the king of, Roger? Not What's sure. behind you? Oh, 3D printers. <laughs> He's the king of 3D yeah. printers. He's yeah, got a, lot a of print those. farm. Yep. He's got a print farm. Oh, you got the cheaty behind you. What's the other one? Looks like a like a uh, Creality. There's a here, I'll move here. Creality. Oh, there you go. That's the Ender 3 V3. Yeah. Then next to that over here is a couple of Ender 3 V2s. And then if I turn this around. There's uh, two King Rune over there, and another Ender 3 V2. And then in the back room, there's a longer LK4, a LK5, and a TiVo Tarantula Pro, and a two more Ender 3 V2s. See, I don't have room for that. I told you, he's the king of 3D printing. He's so Mon, when Monport originally contacted me, they said, hey, we'll send you a 50, an 80-watt CO2 laser. It's like, no, no, don't send me one. I don't have room for that. It'll be out in the yard. <laughs> so I, I I tried to get them to settle on a uh, on a fiber laser, but then they sent me a contract, and it was a bit unruly. So I told them I needed to change, and they didn't call me back. So so they uh, I told you they sent me a message, and I was talking with them, and I said, nah. And I, I kind of like what they offered me asked for double. Yeah. And then uh, they said, uh, we can't do maybe next month. Every month we have like a, I said, okay. So we'll see. Okay. The little, uh, when you got graph you're talking about here is uh, what I call a burn test or an engraving test. And it doesn't come with a laser. You can do it from uh, light burn. Uh, yep. You can make your own. There's ones you could download. But they they don't come specifically with the laser generally, yeah, like that. This thing, this thing. Yep. Oh, there's two of them. Yep. I don't have any of them laying here close. Cut test and engrave test. This is off the uh, the P two actually. This is when it's not going good. <laughs> <laughs> this is when it is going good. <laughs> well, I will say you if, it, if you make one of those up for a ten watt laser. Then you go and throw that same file in a 40 watt laser. It just burns a bunch of holes. Yeah. The whole thing is like kind of what I was doing with this is that not is that I wanted the gray to stay metallic, like have a shimmer metallic look to it. And I had no idea where to start. So I, <laughs> I was way off on this one, but I got dialed in eventually. But, but then the other thing too, is that black versus red versus blue. I mean, they are nowhere near, they can be totally different than each other. So, um, I'm still dialing in all the colors. Yeah, I find the colors are just a little unpredictable. They're better with with a like a Mopa, right? But right. but with you know, the diode laser companies keep saying, "Oh, you can engrave in color." Yeah, you take two pieces of stainless steel or even two different places on the same piece of stainless steel and you got, engrave with the same power and one time you'll get blue and the next time you'll get kind of a brown color. It's like that's not color. Color is right, something right. you can predict. It is color, but it's uncontrolled. Yeah, so I was doing all that on the the 30 watt uh, race, this one right here. Uh, I didn't yeah. think it was there was a point to use a 60 watt laser to scratch, you know, fair. That's kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. but, so but that's was, one of the reasons to get a MOPA laser, right? Is you get to do reasonably predictable color. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I'm still down those in, but I'm excited. So Jack got a 22 watt Algo Laser Delta for 500 bucks. That's a pretty good price. Yeah, that's nice. a good buy. How do you, how do you like that laser? I love it, but I don't want to taint anybody. But mine is still sitting right here. Nice. It says if you can be honest on review, is it even a review? If you can't be honest on a review, right? That's why I generally don't take money for reviews. No, neither Where, do I. 
nor will I do a contract. Yeah. And, and I won't let them see the video first. I don't mind doing a contract that tells me that you want certain content covered. Like, can yeah. you cover an unboxing? Can you do? That's fine. Like, you, you want at least a minimum of this or that. I'm cool with that. You know, but um, that's the extent of the contract. Yeah. Because if I, if I want to tell somebody that that you know this laser has well I did it with the Creality and I think they're a little grumpy with me but you know it bothers me that they have a forty watt laser which has a top speed of twenty five thousand millimeters a minute where everyone else is thirty six or more and it's like why would you put a forty watt laser on this thing and you can't go fast enough to use it fiber laser budget alternative please explain the question. What do you mean by that? You're just looking for a discount fiber laser? Are you saying you just like, like, where's the best place to buy a cheap fiber laser? Or I don't know what you mean by an alternative to a fiber laser. Let us know. We'll answer your question. We're here. Uh, I mean, if you're just looking for a, a reasonably good, low-priced fiber laser. The Comarker B4 isn't bad. It's available in anywhere from 20 to, I think, 80 watts. Right. So the only thing that I would say is that a lot of the U.S.-based laser manufacturers are just reselling rebranded lasers, right? So um, if you can buy a laser factory direct, it's not always, but sometimes like 100% off. Like they're a hundred percent micing the parking the price up. So um, you know, that could be a great Yeah, this is the this is the the harsh reality, right? There just aren't that many manufacturers of lasers. So, you know, right. you look at IKEA and and uh, who are they owned by? And Aitzer, I think, are all part of the same company. Um, in the fiber world, you look at at the laser you have sitting behind you there with the box on the floor, and then yeah. compare that to uh say a, a cloud ray they have one that looks exactly the same right like look at the placement of the buttons and everything it's like virtually identical so they're all just rebranded i think there's like yeah. you know there's there's like one little company somewhere in shenzhen that makes every fiber laser there is right and people just put what their you, names what, on. what you heard when he said too is that a jtp laser you know there's like there's really like three or four manufacturers right but I would say three or four manufacturers to certain components, right? It's like saying like, um, you know, like a Chevy pickup or a Dodge pickup. Is it really a Chevy? Like when you, you know, they're assembled all over the places. Parts come all over the world, but it's still American truck, right? Dodge trucks are made in Mexico, you know? <laughs> but, but it's an American truck, right? <laughs> Apparently they're going to double in price if uh, in November, right? Yeah. Uh, as long as it doubles my value, you know, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, your trading value will cut be cut in half, but <laughs> right. So here I'm gonna I'm gonna unshamelessly throw a, a plug out there, but uh, in all honesty though, like if you are looking for a um um laser, a fiber laser, send him an email. Tell him I sent you. Um and it, you know, at least you're you're cutting out the middleman, you're buying factory direct. And you're going to see realistically what you get for your money. Because sometimes I think that like, and there's nothing wrong with just, you know, it's like you don't walk into a Ferrari dealership and you have five bucks in your pocket, right? But you also, if you're going to purchase something, you kind of kind of know where to start. Like, are you way off basis? Should you be starting with a, a dial laser? Should you be starting with a CO2 laser? Like, or do you need to save to get there? Like, there's nothing wrong with, it's not like you're tire kicking, but you got to know where to start. So it may not be a bad idea to just, give them a call and say, Hey, look, I'm looking for a 30 watt fiber laser. You know, what's the reality of the price of that? <clears throat> you know, and then the other thing is too, is that when you're buying factory direct, you see so many people on Facebook nowadays, they're advertising all these lasers. And it was like, if we live near Home Depot and Home Depots are only in your state and you could sell an Amazon Home Depot products, you'd make a killing, right? Well, if you live in China and the factory's right there, <laughs> you know, you could technically, but the biggest difference is these large manufacturers, they have uh, deals with uh, brokerage companies that do the importing, right? And take care of all the importing because when you're importing these these uh, equipment in from overseas, you have to pay import taxes, all these other taxes. And if these people try to like lie on the paperwork, you could be on the hook that you all of a sudden your laser shows up and the man calls you like, hey, you need to pay 
$1,200 or we're confiscating your laser because you didn't pay the import tax. So, you know, that's something to think too. Like you're dealing with someone who's used to importing to the United States all the time. You're not going to have those type of problems. They're taking care of all that paperwork for you. And it's, and the other thing is they can audit. So, you know, you start getting stuff all the time. They can audit you and then send you a bill just like the IRS. By the way, we know you you received so many packages and you owe us five grand. So just something to think about, you know. And then, of course, you can do all your, you know, your mom port and all the other laser manufacturer you find stateside and just and just really see an apples apples comparison. That's all. That's why I support all of you guys. I purchased my equipment with your honest reviews, twenty five hundred dollars worth of equipment. I'm very happy and impressed. Sweet well, good deal. deal. Yeah. That means that means we're doing our jobs too. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I can't tell you how much it bothers me every now and again if someone will say, Well, you recommended this thing and I have this problem. And it's like, okay, it's not my laser, but <laughs> you know, I can only I can only I can only review what I see. And one of them, I've had a couple people, and I think it's it's more a function of the popularity of the uh the we create vision. I've had a couple of people say, Oh, I have this problem. And it's like uh, okay, and the the real problem is that the the customer support of almost all of these companies is just brutal, right? Like it's just they just don't invest in customer support, and it's uh, you know it's one of those things, right? Hey, Ventari's on. Hey, Steve. The person that I got the Allegro from could cut a perfect circle with it, but in grade would not be. A perfect circle. I just need firmware update. Now that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I had to do a firmware update on my my Delta when I got it, but mine was sort of pre-production, and there were a lot of things that weren't working on it. And well, my, my uh, Alpha engraving. had the same situation. Like you cut you cut something, mm -hmm. and it's all kind of jaggy. The cuts, if you're cutting at an angle or or a, in an arc, and I made a comment to them and they said, well, you just have to do a firmware update. And it's like, okay. The Delta has actually automatic firmware updates now. So this may be a loaded question, but the dial laser engraver decently can cut a quarter inch plywood from templates. How many watts dial laser are you talking about? 20. 20 will do it. Yeah. yeah. You could do it with a 10, but it takes multiple passes. The only thing that I would say about is about plywood is it's glued and if yeah, you saw it can, it can be unpredictable it can yes. be unpredictable on the same sheet yes yeah. so i don't have yeah, it here. i've i've had plywood that well you have the glues are different from from internal use plywood to external use plywood the the glues are very different it's hard to cut external plywood um like outdoor plywood um, I've also had plywood that has nylon cord running through it hmm. for strength, and you, you the, it cuts the wood fine. Then it hits a piece of that nylon cord, and it's white, right? That's why it doesn't cut. And the uh, the beam hits it, and it just you, everything is loose, but but it's just full of string, and you can't. You oh, have to sucks. end up taking a knife and running it around. So you have to be really careful, especially if you're buying hardware store plywood. Um, yeah. I found a couple that that I like. And uh, they come from Home Depot, and and yeah, same. Here. I use those all the time. This this stuff here is hardware store plywood, Home Depot, and it's just what like like uh, it's just MDF. like core one core, like MDF or um, what's that Project Board the panels, hardwood panels. Yeah, MDF is hard to cut though with with well any laser really. Again, for the same reason, there's different kinds of MDF, and yep. some of it the glue is different in it. The density, right? There's also yeah. MDO, and that's really hard to cut. Yeah, I used fact, to make a lot of speaker boxes back in the day out of that. If you cut a lot of MDO <clears> with, a, like, even on your table saw, that'll even dull a carbide blade pretty quick. Yeah, I used to make speaker boxes out of that back in the day. You also have to fill out the customs radiation clearance and some things like that, I remember. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, when you're buying a piece of equipment stateside, you don't have to worry about any of those hassles. But if you're buying something from overseas, you got to make sure that someone's doing all your import paperwork correctly, you know, because yeah. you know, the last thing you want to do, the bait and switch, right? 
you're like, oh, this one's five thousand, this one's seven thousand. You think, oh, I'm saving money by buying overseas, and then they hit you with a an import tax, and it gets here. Yeah, well, when you're buying like a like a longer or a X tool, any of the big ones, they all have have like U.S. warehouses, right? So when you buy right. one, it's coming from the local warehouse, and the reason they can do it cheaper than you can possibly do it if you wanted to bring something from China is because they ship a container load of them, right? Right. And they so they do one time. piece of paperwork for the whole container, not, right. not one for every laser. Exactly. Yes, I understand the glue issues. I've learned that from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't learned until you've experienced it yourself, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate finding that nylon and plywood. I personally have never seen that, to be honest. With oh, you. yeah, I've run into that before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Roger. For those, for those who are on the on the on the stream here, Vintari has a uh, has a good laser channel too. Yeah, I've, I've seen them uh, on YouTube. Yeah, I liked your uh, the one you did of the uh, the black paint with the it was like a bunch of kids sitting around a campfire when you engraved it. it that was kind of cool. Yeah, I, uh, I, did, I did. I did this one this week. I nice. can get it into into some light here, and I put it into this snazzy case. I actually I actually made this frame to show my wife because I wanted to do a, a photo for her, and and she looked at it and went, "Ah, oh, that's not my style." It's like, <laughs> but what do you do? Can I engrave food? I have ideas also on for my channel. I've seen people engrave uh, oranges. I know you engrave bananas, a banana because I've done it. Bananas. Eggs. Yeah. Toast, toast, steaks. I've seen people do steaks. <laughs> They're just begging to be be lasered, right? <laughs> yeah. It's for those people that want a piece of it well done and a piece of it medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you can slice it. Yeah, and then you, you can label those, it. Have you seen those cleaner lasers? Like the people use to clean like frames and car parts and stuff. Yeah, They're like they, fiber they lasers. Cook steak with it. <laughs> Yeah, they're just fiber lasers, low yeah. power. Well, they you can, can use them to, you can use your fiber laser to take rust off of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they have these like backpack ones now that they have two twenty plus battery. So oh. yeah, so when it doesn't draw, it doesn't break, doesn't flip the breaker. It's for people who are strong backed. Well, I think it's for body shops, right? Yeah. You bring in an old bomb, or you bring in an old sixties car, you know the old days of sandblasting would crush walnuts because they don't you know mess up the metal when it's so rusted a laser would just clean it up without being too abrasive to mess up rusty metal yes it's a it's a patent drawing this one happens to be a patent for a water pistol that I, that i dug out of out of the patent database you can find some really cool things on there um I'm building a, a new studio so I can eventually get rid of the back wall and, and create more space in my workshop here. And, and I'm probably going to put some of those on the wall just for, for some eye candy. You want to know, is that, is that food safe to eat? Sure, it is. So. Yeah. yeah. Sure, it's just cooked. Yeah, cooked a little <laughs> more in one spot than the other. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have to make I, a hot dog. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't heat an egg too much if it's in the <laughs> shell. It might. It might pop. But yeah, that'd make a hell of a mess to clean up, for sure. Uh, I, I I love Corby's comments. <laughs> nice one. Hopefully, hopefully he can get a laser. Yeah, well, apparently a lot of manufacturers are watching our lives, so that's good, guys. You guys got any Sweet. giveaways you want us to give our subscribers or anything you want us to review, let us know. Hit us up in our inboxes. Yeah, just put it in the comments and, and uh, point you know to the manufacturer. You know they won't <laughs> do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm They'll get 2,000 emails the next day. <laughs> <laughs> From manufacturers going, stop labeling us. <laughs> no, that's funny, though. Uh-oh. No bearded Viking with you guys live anymore. Um, he was in the chat earlier. Didn't join a lot today. Yeah, he comes and goes. Hopefully he can make some guest appearances on occasion. Yeah, there you go. He's still a friend of ours. No worries. I need a laser. I thought I, I thought you I thought you bought a uh, an Algo Laser Delta for five hundred bucks. 
<laughs> or was that someone else? No, that was you. There you go. Okay, any manufacturer watching want to give a free laser away, I'm down. There you go. Our <laughs> you subscribers go. are saying yeah. they want free lasers. So we know well, you guys are watching. I, I'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can if I can convince a manufacturer to do another contest. Maybe once a okay. quarter. Okay. I, I was uh, Corby. I was devastated that you didn't win the last one. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about selling mugs on Etsy. Thoughts? Yeah, that works. You need to have something unique. That don't try to copy what everybody else is doing because yeah. You're... Do something different, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be something different, unique. Find your own niche, sir. Yeah, that was the key point that you said in there. Niche. Find your own niche. Like anyone can sell tumblers, but if you have a niche or something, yeah. Um, so a Galvo laser isn't a kind of laser. The Galvo is the thing that steers the mirrors, and yeah, fiber lasers have Galvos. Yeah, instead so of stepper, the, so instead the of stepper motors. Yeah, yeah so does the F one. There you go. Wasn't meant to be. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, next one. It says, I know I might burn down my house at this time. Now, when I first got my laser, my wife says, it was about the third day. Our house smells like a hamster cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I put in some vents. <laughs> and uh, we don't have that problem anymore. But, yeah. You definitely want an external vent for sure. Just obviously, I'm in my basement. I would like to have a CO2. Galvo. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what a CO2 Galvo buys you, other than it's not a big box like a regular CO2. It's I kind of the form factor of a fiber laser. Have you seen those CO2 slash RF lasers? Yeah, that's what this would end up being. Is is a it would be an RF CO two laser. Yeah, I, they, I don't know. They do an amazing job one. engraving glass. Yeah, I don't know anyone owns one, but I saw they have like a like a drop down um, like inside of it, like everyone you know, so you can put the cups or all that, and it's all built inside. It. I was like, man, and then like and like an external cooler. That's it. It seems pretty big though. A big footprint on it. Well, it's a CO2, right? So right. There's there's you know physics involved, right? You can't right. you can't get a hundred watts out of a two inch long CO2 tube. I replied back with some suggestions. I tried them, but not much luck. Uh, I guess I need to know what the question was. I get so many comments a day. There's uh, I can't keep track of everything. Let us know what your question is. It's a live question and answer. We can answer it right now. Yeah, there you just, go. Uh, ask specifically what it was. I because honestly, I don't recall. I so many comments every day. That... Oops, sorry. <laughs> Same question again. Oh, burning tumblers is sublimation. Uh, either your time is too long. If you're doing sublimation, your time's too long or you're using too much pressure or the heat's too high. If you're burning tumblers and you're laser engraving them, you need to crank power down or increase the speed yeah. or both. Yeah. Yeah, I found that CO2 lasers do a better job engraving tumblers than diode lasers. Diode lasers tend to cut through the, the paint on the tumbler and then, in, and then darken the stainless underneath it sometimes. So you end up with with dark text, which on a white cup might be great, but if the cup is already black, you end up engraving and you can't see it. I think it with a fiber laser, you almost have to like the first pass has to barely take it off, and then your cross hatch cleans it up, right? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you're absolutely right. Yeah, like a fiber laser. Fiber lasers are great for for engraving tumblers if yeah. you have a rotary for it. Yeah. When I got my laser matrix, it was it was at idle for two weeks until I got the exhaust done. Yep. Oh, so you, you looked at it in the corner and rubbed your hand, rubbed your hands <laughs> together. <and see. laughs> if, if I turn my screen so you can see the corner of my basement, 
I look like a hoarder with a bunch of boxes I haven't opened yet. I don't know if you guys have a section like that. I have a whole bunch of them right here. <laughs> you get an email every now and then. When are you going to do that video? I'm on it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I only have one thing left to review, I think. I have, I, and it's not even a laser. It's the Creality 3D scanner, which, I've played, with a, which I've played with a bit. And... I don't know if I'm impressed yet or not. I think it looked it looked cool online. Their pre sales. Is there a difference between the it, EU laser over a US laser other than the plug? I think that's power all supply. It is. Power supply. Yeah, I think it's if literally. It, if, it, if it doesn't have a switch on it to switch from uh, 220 to 120, um, and you get a EU laser that needs 220, that's what you're going to have to have. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was first ordering like DTF equipment that wasn't from the United States and it was only 220 and these weird plugs. And you had to oh. do all kinds of fuck yeah. boost transformers. Yeah. Well, yeah, Rick, you, also Rick have talking the, about. you also have the yep. 50 versus 60 mm -hmm. cycle too, right? Yeah, yeah. I had to buy this box and it was like to make it work right. Isolation transformer. Yeah. 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 Amazon was my friend then. Oh, this is the, this has become the weekly question. How do you like the rolling? <laughs> he when he first started the video, he was singing that song. I want to roll and roll and roll. And... <laughs> How's that song go? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You don't know the song? No. What? I, I'd play it, but we'd get <laughs> we'd get kicked for the <laughs> some kind of copyright infringement. Yeah, exactly. My grandkids came over the other day and they complained my house was too cold. I told them to go stand in the corner because it's dad 90 joke. degrees over there. <laughs> That's a dad joke. <laughs> the dad jokes. <laughs> you said that's right, Roger. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Keep it rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> I live a sheltered life. That must be a country song or something. No, it's uh, who the hell sings that song? Rawhide theme. Yeah, theme from Rawhide. You got to oh, be old Rawhide. to know that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that. You got to be old to know that one, or have, <laughs> or have seen the Blues Brothers. Well, you see, I'm only 25, so yeah, <laughs> twice. Uh, tw <laughs> I I wouldn't know. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Oh, sorry, we clicked the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yep. It's funny. Limp biscuit. Yeah. See, everyone else got the joke. <laughs> yeah, they go. They. I mean, these guys go back to when I was in high school. Yeah. Which means they're probably ready to go on another world tour. Yeah, I've been seeing that lately. A lot of people all of a sudden, right? It's, it's like, you know, it's like the Eagles must must be ready to go on tour again. Although I think they've officially retired now. But the Stones, oh. guaranteed they're going to do one more round. Although when I did see Madonna, I didn't even recognize her. You know, when you start <laughs> talking about the Rolling Stones and the Eagles, you're back into my high school days. Yeah. That's when they well, first come out. Yeah. 3D resin printing. No, I have turned down every 3D resin printer I've been offered. Uh, I just don't want to get into it. I have two of them. And I did a, a review on one actually not that long ago, uh, which was a good printer. But you got to understand that, that resin printers are fast but messy. So and correct me prints, if I'm wrong. And the prints are usually brittle. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't most people only use them for like jewelry making because they're not actually keeping the print as a permanent thing they're actually just using it to make a mold yeah, right they get used a lot for cast for making casting right this this was resin printed if i can get it focused here yeah so very That's high cool. resolution but if i grab so actually there was a flag on top of this thing and it's now snapped off but um it is brittle now you can get more durable resin but it, it's you know i don't know it's still messy my son uses it to make a D, D figurines. Yep. It gets used a lot for for that kind of thing. Not well, like right. So, so not, the not the kind itself. of thing you're gonna use for tools. Right. right. So the yeah. object itself is not necessarily something that has to be super hard because you're not using the object, you're just using it to make a mold to make something else. 
Well, the D and D guys, they print them and then and then hand paint them. And I talked to a guy who I made a bunch of uh, of those D and D boxes I showed you. Um, he has a wall full of characters, like big, small. Mm -hmm. They're all like basically to scale. So a dragon is really big, and a you know some guy who's a who's a, a thief is a little small guy. Um, and he casts a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I use FBM printers because you know, like the this thing here, for example, I need to print twenty or thirty of those at a time. And it's a little hard to do on a resin printer. Because Actually, no, it's printers. easier on a resin printer. Now, you, well, it depends on the resin printer. So resin printers are very good at, like, if you print one of something or 10 of something, it takes the same amount of time. That's the nice thing about resin printers. Well, how, 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 so hold on, rewind that. If how you print platform? one of something or 10 of something at the same time, how's that possible? Yeah. So you have a platform, and uh, well, I could go get one, but... Um, if you have something that you can fit 10 of those things on that platform, when you make it, because the way the process works is it dips down into the resin and then, um, and then there's uh, like an LCD screen and they flash, they make it the flash shape part. you want and then they flash the light through it, right, to, to harden the resin. Well, that's the same whether you're doing one or 10, right? Oh, I got you. Now, the, the rule is they all have to fit on the, on the platform, on the, on the platform. But the one three D printer has a huge platform. Okay. And it can print at I don't know two hundred and fifty layers per hour or something. I mentioned Australia hey, earlier today. An Australian guy. I mentioned Australia earlier today. Hi from Australia. I just bought two pairs of safety glasses. You recommended for the laser. Were they? Were they? <laughs> Roger, right. big guy, alien goggles. Yeah, those cloud rays. <laughs> I love those things though. Absolutely love them. <laughs> they fit over my glasses and they're comfortable. And there's oh, been a couple man. times I actually forget to take them off, and I'll go walk <laughs> in the house. And... and you look like Bono. Yeah. A anyone who's ever seen those glasses, I, when I saw that video, I was like, "Oh no, I can't do it! I can't do it!" These guys. Oh, these ones are actually for a CO2 laser, but the same style. Yeah. I have the I have the, the, the gold ones up there somewhere. So there's the uh, <laughs> these are the ones I use for guests. <laughs> I don't care if they go blind. <laughs> I, I, got a, I, go I got a I got a drawer full of them, right? Because every laser manufacturer gives you oh, free lasers. Yeah, those cheap, them. those really bad green ones. They're yeah. so terrible. <laughs> yeah. I got for anybody who buys a dye laser. Hanging if up get over a, there. Yeah. <laughs> if you get a pair of those green glasses, throw them away because they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's three of them just hanging over there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a, I have a box full of them. Yeah, you get these really tacky red ones too. <laughs> yeah. Well, those ones aren't. Those are those are kind of the next level up from the really bad ones. Those aren't bad. I couldn't decide what style, so I bought both. You bought the big Dark Vader looking glasses. I bought those. Yeah, they weren't cheap, but they're optically correct for a blue diode and. They're certified and all that stuff. Now, one of the lasers I got, I don't remember what brand it was, came with these. Clear? <laughs> wow. Well, no, if they're fiber laser glasses, they 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 could be clear. <laughs> where did where did where did Cor here? Corby's back with another car. He doesn't want us talking about 3D printers now because <laughs> now he's gonna want one of those. <laughs> We're gonna get death threats from his wife. <laughs> These are, yeah. the, these are a yeah. little bit better here. These are the right color for a blue diode laser. They need to be orange because that's the opposite of blue. There's yeah. this guy. He's an influencer. I don't know if you guys have ever seen him. He does all these reviews on lasers, but he doesn't own any of them. <laughs> he just wears yeah. these orange glasses, and he talks about them on their website. And I said, like, bro, do you own any of these lasers? Not only. Ellie Forged. Any. That's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, you only have two eyes, and the laser will take them both out at the same time. So, let's go like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always close one eye when you're using yeah. a laser, so you have one good one to walk yeah. out of the out of the uh, shop. I, I actually make a a caution sign: uh, do not look at the laser with your remaining eye. I have one <laughs> of those. 
Somebody wanted one, so I made I made a couple of them. So I sell digital art and Etsy. You know what's funny is that I think that if you sell artwork, you probably make more money than a lot of people because you could sell to everybody, right? Collectively. I actually had a copyright claim from somebody on Etsy this week. Again, one of, one of the oh yeah, I get them all the time. But this one, he says, the design you're using is what I'm selling on Etsy. I said, yeah, I know exactly where you bought the design too. You bought it from Dane Graphics, the same place I did. So that was the end of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get copyright stuff just every week. I'm getting at least one. The only thing that I had is that uh, when I first started, I used to do a lot of DTG and DTF shirts, and I started making a lot of Christian shirts. And I'd had people report my Facebook group and page. And uh, because Facebook had to do the investigation, they'd shut my page down for like three days. Obviously, when after they completed the investigation, I'd get a notification saying they apologize. And, you know, my I'm up, up back and running. But it still sucked that I was constantly getting reported for. And it was just Christian sayings. It was not anything like over the top, you know. But crazy. Didn't they, after a while, just tell people to stop reporting these things? I don't know. My wife, I, my, I even told my wife, like, do you think I, she's like, maybe she just stopped selling them. I'm like, nah, whatever. But yeah, eventually, I guess they laid off because they, you know, I didn't stop, but it was crazy. You can catch it is that you can't charge much for clip art, so I'm considering selling mugs. You need to package bundle like you need to come up with a christmas yeah. bundle come up with a like a theme package that's probably like you know a decent amount because if it's just one particular item every time you got all the etsy fees like what the hell did you make mm. but if you package things and people will pay 20 30 bucks because it's 40 50 items that's what i would do start packaging things if i get this to focus anything that's sarcastic sells well <laughs> I should I should be a billionaire then. <laughs> My YouTube got hit because I had an old rug it cross. Yeah. <coughs> Crazy. Christians say things Christian sayings are starting to be viewed that's, as hate speech these days. That's so bizarre. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, just I, I guess that anything that you sell, you have to believe in it, right? That's why I don't sell anything political, racist, or anything like that. Yeah, the general but, rule is to stay away from religion and politics. Somebody, you, religion you'll annoy route. somebody no matter what, right? Yeah, I went down the religious route, but I stood away from politics and hate speech. Yeah, but um, I've been known to be sarcastic or cross the line sometimes. <laughs> Uh, almost all the uh, mugs that we that I sell are have sarcastic sayings on them. And they're not nasty, but they're just sarcastic. <laughs> Round is a shape. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I have a I have a T-shirt I made that says "May contain sarcasm." See, Make a I, what? May contain sarcasm. Oh, right nice across one. the front I, of this one of my shirts. I, I made a T-shirt when I when I was working full time. I, I I had a team, and some people were a little. You had to stop and explain things to them, right? And I made a T-shirt that said, "I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you." Oh, I, I wore that in a video, and somebody took great offense to it. And it was like, it's just a shirt, right? <laughs> it's right. Like I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. It's dark. I reach into the drawer and I grab a shirt and I leave. I put it on, and I when I turn the light on in the kitchen, it's oh, it's that shirt. <laughs> it's too funny and it wasn't it wasn't intended to be it was sarcastic for sure but it wasn't intended to be be upsetting to anybody other than the people i worked with at the time yeah so so i think just uh so far in this live just kind of repeated question is that uh and, and it almost seems like a theme right that uh what's the best laser as far as wattage you should start with right <laughs> and uh yeah crazy a million watts that would solve all your problems yeah yeah the vivo heat press that's a popular one and speaking of heat presses i've got one down in the shop right now that just came in it's made by a company called big big sun 
That's an automatic 15 by 15 heat press. I'm going to be doing a uh, video on it tomorrow. So it'll so, probably post next week. I would say if you're looking for a heat press that you want to get at least a 16 by 20 or or bigger. Well, my, my, I, H, my HPN is a 16 by 20. Right. And the only reason I say that is a, is a 15 by 15 is cool, but you start doing shirts over 2X or 2X and bigger, it sucks. And then the other thing is that um, you're going to have name brands that are just going to be way more expensive, like heat press nations, hytronics. I have hytronic heat presses, but I mean, they're insane. They connect to Wi Fi, they do firmware updates. I mean, they're insane. You, you turn it on, it has a timer, it tells you 18 minutes till it's warm. But if you took a laser and you went to the heat press and you looked at it and you took the temperature, no matter where you're at in that, in that, it's consistent heat. And when you buy these cheap Amazon, you know, heat presses, you know, you're going to have inconsistent heat spots. So if you're doing full print shirts, if you're doing it in a center, a lot of times the center is pretty good. But if you're doing, trying to fold the whole shirt, then that's sometimes you're running problems along the edges. My uh, HPN, I've got the Signature Series 16 by 20. Then I've got their multi tumbler press, shot glasses and everything else. And they're not cheap, but they're made for, you can use them all day. And yeah. it's not going to hurt them a bit. Whereas some of them, what I call the hobby level, well, the Vivor, it's a good press, but it's it's not for continuous production. You don't want to run that 24-7. It won't last long. Thanks, Steve. We'll see you on Wednesday. So if anyone who missed that earlier in the video, we are changing our lives to Wednesday at 6.30 Central Time. Because what's your what's your time, Steve? I am Atlantic time, so it's currently 10.06 for me. Okay. I hang out in the Atlantic Ocean, right? So <laughs> He's really a mermaid. That's why he never stands up. <laughs> well, the beauty is I'm, I'm only about 70 miles from the Gulf Stream, so winters are nice here. We do get snow, but but it's a very short winter. Yeah, so we took a we took a vote, and that was the majority rule. So we are listening to our subscribers, and we will be on Wednesdays from now on. Um, and it was funny that we did get an actual comment that said that everyone's stressed and from work and to hustle and bustle. And our video was kind of like breaking up the hump day, right? It was just made them laugh, whatever bullshit with us the same. So it's sure funny I, that I'm not sure I can handle that kind of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now officially on hump day on Wednesday. So uh, we have to live up to that name. <laughs> Oddly enough, when I talk to my wife, she says it causes stress. <laughs> yeah. Being married definitely causes stress. <laughs> I, I don't have any stress. <laughs> oh, man. That makes one of us, I guess. <clears throat> so we got a lot in the live, guys. Come on, speak up. Let us know if you guys have any questions, anything. Um, anything you want us to answer. And a lot of us already chimed in on where you guys are from or you guys are joining us from. If you haven't already, let us know. I'd appreciate that. And it was definitely interesting to see there was a lot of people from Australia out that got me off. United States and Canada, I would expect, but Australia was cool. Yeah, here you go. It's it's and here's speaking of Australia. It's Friday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> what happens tomorrow? <laughs> That's crazy, actually. When you think about that, that's crazy. Now, if you could give me the lottery numbers for tomorrow, then I'd be happy. I, I got my tickets. <laughs> I got 29 years of stress. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I got a whole lot more than that. Let's yeah, see. me too. Let's see. 27. I'm 27 years. I had to use a calculator. Oh, there. See, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna lose one on Wednesday. Well, you can watch the you can watch the the recast. There you go. Had enough hack. Had enough hack. Had enough okay. Oh, had enough okay? Yeah. <laughs> had enough okay. <laughs> <laughs> he must be Canadian. <laughs> no, he can't be. He wouldn't make anybody think that hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Good name, good name. This sort of came up a little bit earlier and I uh didn't bring it up at the time. 
but it came up with the food questions. And I think there might be a confusion between um, the radiation that a, that a laser puts off versus the unsafe radiation that you might get from other sources. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not so, even going to comment on that. <laughs> having, well, I can comment. Having spent several years in the laser industry and several years in the atomic energy industry, I can explain the difference to you pretty plainly. <laughs> They're not the same thing. Light radiation is, is very different. And once in the case of a, of a laser, once the thing is cooked and you turn the laser off, the radiation has gone. Lasers, lasers don't have a half-life. There you go, people. Now you know. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you didn't know we had such qualified people on, maybe, on the staff, did you? <laughs> maybe I need to put that on a t-shirt. You have a laugh track? It doesn't have a half-life. Yeah, I need a laugh track, too. <laughs> we got one. Oh, boy. Please stop. <laughs> oh, I can't miss IDC Woodcraft. What I don't that? know that one. I was gonna say I don't know. Does IDC stand for I don't care, or what does that stand for? Uh -huh. I had enough for years on AOL. Then somebody took it, and I had the okay to use it on Google. <laughs> yeah i still have my aol email address yep i do too funny back when they used to send you cds in the mail about every yep. day yep 300 I, minutes whatever it was the cd i, with I never people. had an i never had an aol account i had a compuserve account you remember compuserve okay oh, yeah. and your email address was just some number at well, it wasn't even an ad. CompuServe, wasn't it CompuServe.net or something like that, right? It wasn't even, no, there was no dot anything because oh, that okay. was before the internet, right? It was dial-up. I was actually was a systems CompuServe. operator on CompuServe. Oh, sweet. Now, for the Family Handyman Forum, the, the magazine, if you ever heard of that, I was their electrical consultant. Nice. <laughs> okay, Steve, I need a plutonium. I need a... DeLorean, I need power. I got the lottery numbers for you. <laughs> you need a flux capacitor too, though. Hmm. Well, I don't, actually, I don't actually know anybody in the atomic energy industry anymore. They've probably long retired because I've been out of that business for 20 years. I got my lottery ticket. Let's see what's it's up to right now. It's up to, uh, it's pretty high right now. <laughs> It's like almost a billion, I think. Nine hundred and seventy-seven million. That'd be enough. Maybe but, enough. But there's a bunch of tax on that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, the next video. Thirty-three percent. The the next video, I'm yeah. on a cigar boat in Florida. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I know Americans like to think that Canadians have a lot of tax, but lottery winnings are tax-free here. I know that sucks. Here's the thing. If they charge like paid up front, if you charge, if you were, I'd rather pay the taxes right now. Charge the tax on my ticket. So if I win, I don't pay taxes. How many people would pay it? I, I guarantee everyone would just pay it. Well, what if you lose? Then you just paid a whole bunch of money for nothing. So what? You're only talking 25 cents. The ticket's two bucks. What's tax on $2? Oh, tax on the ticket. Yeah. Right. So then when you win, you don't pay tax when you win. Not, 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 not proactively paying tax on the winnings. Right, right, right. You don't know how the government works. Yeah. They'll, they'll go, oh, well, we can charge it on both ends. Well, Roger, I have a flux capacitor, but I'm having the damnedest time finding <laughs> the potato. Well, for a well, long I, know, I know where there is some, but... <laughs> Well, for a long Let's time, not I... get on a watch list, okay? <laughs> well, it's it's under pretty big security, so I don't think you'd get in. But okay. I took a capacitor out of a cat bank once and put it on my desk uh, back when I was working, and I actually had flux capacitor written on it and 1.2 gigawatts underneath it. <laughs> Considering how expensive they are, they're probably in somebody's catalytic converter. I'm from the future. Just toss out your ticket. I already won. 
I always say the lottery is the cheapest therapy you'll get, right? For four bucks, you're bullshitting like, man, if I won this, if I won that, you lose, you do it all over again. See, see, I've always said the lottery is is a tax for people who can't do math. I'm not a, I'm not a gambler, although we do have casinos around here. My wife and I do go to one of them quite a bit, but we don't gamble. We like the <laughs> no, we like the entertainment there, and they have a nice bar and. Lots of good food, and <laughs> we, we, just... we used to we used to go to. There was a casino not too far from where I lived when, before I moved here, and and we used to go not to gamble, but we used to go to watch horse races because they had harness racing there, and and we we didn't bet, we didn't know how to bet on horses, but we just watched the horses. It was very, it was it was amazing, but but yeah, I, I'm not very good at gambling. My wife has <laughs> won thousands gambling, but. She doesn't get Mr. Well Mr. Fusion on the cheap. I'm not sure what that means. Mr. Fusion from uh from Back to the Future. Oh. So when, comes, when when Doc comes back at the end of the first movie, he's got you the know. Mr. Fusion on the back of the car. If you find the plenty watch the list. Watch don't mag so I'll go back and back and erase the watch list. Nice. Probably own it already. Hackers probably own it already anyway. Yeah, I'd rather. You know, have I, I heard that there are actual hoverboards. That they yeah, look, there, they there are. are. Yeah. It's probably some secret device designed at Area 51, right? Well, the hoverboards are actually considered fire starters. Really? I've had a lot of yeah, problems those, with them burning. Yeah, they out. don't they don't actually hover though. <laughs> they just no? stole the, they just stole a good name for a product. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, those th those things they use such cheap batteries in them, right? And and then they they really hammer them when they charge them. And it's like the uh, Samsung phones there for a while were catching fire because they were just blasting the power into them. Yeah, no iPhones are doing that. I am I I, I uh, so I I have a Tesla Model Three, and I <laughs> if I ever go to a supercharger, those things are like four hundred volts, four hundred and forty volts at one hundred and ten amps. And it's like, how the hell does this thing not catch fire? Like the the cord, the cord from the from the charger to the car is liquid cooled, and it's actually it's bigger than the cooled? Yes, and the, it's bigger than the connector you plug into the car. So wow. in Canada, all of the chargers are version three chargers, the latest and greatest ones, and those things are just crazy. Like they'll they'll charge your car in like ten minutes. You can drive away. So, so does the rapid charge burn the battery out by not doing a slow? Uh, yeah, I don't charge? go very often. Like I charge at home most of the time. But if I'm on a long trip, I'll use a supercharger. And I never right. charge to 100 percent though. Do you uh, do you have a Tesla pack at your house? Yeah, I have a wall charger. Not no, one of those like cool red and white ones. <laughs> oh yeah, nice one, nice one. Just just a regular 220 volt charger. Okay. It's is it's there, that one thing I did for the environment. <laughs> is Put there myself actually a, in debt for 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 the environment? Is there actually a real hoverboard, but it only works on specified track, and the magnets need to be cooled with nitrogen to even work. <laughs> so they work until they warm up. Ah oh, man, why so you gotta stop love. my dreams? <laughs> I remember seeing love. them. I remember seeing them advertised in magazines. Do you guys remember that? To buy them. All I remember is like the X-ray glasses. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys what is a gimmicky gift or a gadget that you saw back in the day you thought was cool is a total sham <laughs> huh. so when when i was a kid i got a i got a wrist radio for christmas now nice. keep in mind when i was a kid it was like the late very late 60s very early 70s and a wrist radio was about this big <laughs> and it used uh it, it 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 only had room for like one double a battery so you had radio for about 10 minutes and then you had to change the battery oh, that wow. was a gimmick that was a total gimmick but it was really cool i had a radio i remember i that. had the, i had a wallet with a watch on it <laughs> I thought that was so cool. <laughs> and a zipper. I thought I was so cool with that. <laughs> what the heck? Can't be that hard to distort gravity field. Different frequencies make different patterns on board with rice on them. All right, brother. 
Put your money where your mouth is. Make us Politicians a hoverboard. Politicians have been distorting gravity for, for decades. If you can make us a hoverboard, we'll review it for you, okay? <laughs> if you can distort gravity, I, I, I'm all over it. Just tell me how much money you need. <laughs> it's designed to burn the batteries out so all the child labor mining <laughs> won't stay working. Oh, man, we got we to change that, change that one. Oh, it's borderline <laughs> politics, yeah. Yeah. Sea monkeys. There you go. Oh that yeah, I, I, uh, I yes. fell under that. Yeah. yeah. What about chia ever pet? Anybody ever have a chia pet? No, I had Mexican jumping beans though. Oh, okay. Yeah, they came in. A, you go to like like I don't know. It wasn't Kmart at the time, but department stores oh, wow. at the cash register. They had the little plastic thing with with these little beans jumping around in it. And hey, uh, V, you you join us for the end. Towards the end of our live, and we just uh, uh, remember reminiscing those gimmicky items that when we were a child that you wanted, they were a sham. <laughs> there were just Dick so Tracy. many. Like, yeah, like, they're crazy. Had that wrist radio. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, them. everyone said hoverboards are real, but the government stopped them because they were too dangerous and could, kids couldn't stop and they were getting hit by cars. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> now there's a conspiracy theory <laughs> my friends had a had a laser gun with a zapper on it and when you got shot it zapped you <laughs> so my my dad one day told me the barbecue igniter won't work uh, replace it right so i replaced it <clears throat> and then i stuck it and i clicked it and when i clicked it i saw literally a bolt shoot out from it and hit my hand i'm like ah so I brought it to high school and I'm walking down the halls and I'm just shooting a lightning bolt at everyone's ass. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Next thing I, you know, the school called my mom. They're like, Rick is encouraging everyone to bring uh, barbecue igniters to school and they're shooting people with them. <laughs> that that would officially be the good old days because if you did something <laughs> like that today, you'd be arrested immediately. Oh, sure. <laughs> All right, looks like you, you started your GoFundMe. He's going to do the reverse yeah. gravity. <laughs> yeah, he's going to distort gravity. Uh, just send me the, uh, the the Kickstarter project for that. <laughs> brime shrimp. Yeah, that, that was the one with yeah, the sea brime shrimp. Were, they were the sea monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Spanish fly. Oh. <laughs> well, now, we're, we're, now we're headed into the racy part of the conversation. Yeah. Right? Oh, Hands yeah, I had one of those. Buzzers. Yeah, yeah I had one of that. those too. I was a little disappointed to find out that they weren't actually electronic. They yeah, they didn't like, work. They just buzzed. <laughs> they were just this wind up thing. Yeah, that was so disappointing. For and sure. it was anything but subtle, right? You got this gigantic metal thing stuck <laughs> in your hand, especially as a five year old, right? It, like the thing covers your whole hand. Yeah, you weren't hiding that at all. We used to make orange guns with those clickers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> of course, too I had a lot of fun the first time I got a hold of a whoopee cushion. I had all kinds of fun with that as a kid. Yeah, yeah. I gave my son one not too long ago. Thank, thankfully, we've evolved from the Whoopi Cushion to the Whoopi Cushion app for your phone. Oh, I was in Walmart. They were selling Whoopi Cushions. My son wanted one. So I was walking down the aisle. And when someone gets too close to me, I just squeeze it. <laughs> and I would just laugh and walk away. My wife's like, why are you such a child? I was like, you're lucky I wasn't recorded. This might do good on YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's part of the male experience. <laughs> Jetpacks in the magazines. You yeah, they were one of them. They were in the same category as x-ray glasses. Yeah. Yeah. I never got into comics. You guys get into comics? Never got into that. Oh Not yeah, I was really. su su I was a big Superman fan and uh, Batman and so on. Back you know when I was before I was a teenager. Yeah, I had a few, not too many. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I remember I, when I was I, in the I, states, I Marvels were big, and when I went to Canada, it wasn't big. It seemed like when I went, I remember when I was in grade school, and <laughs> the first thing they said is, "Did you bring your skates?" I'm like, "Skates? What the heck are you talking about?" <laughs> They're like, yeah, recess, everyone skates. I'm like, are you serious? And they had well, this huge yeah. giant ring set up outside. 
So I had to start. If you were, yeah, if you were in the Elliott Lake, you probably skated about ten months a year. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I brought my skates to school so we can ice skate outside on recess. That was kind of funny. Yeah, where where I live here, it barely gets cold enough. But last winter, I watched my neighbor try to make a, an outdoor rink for his kids, and I just shook my head. It's like, yes, it might be three degrees below freezing today, but tomorrow is going to be eight degrees above freezing. So, I'm like, right. don't bother. And every I'd see him out there two, three or four times a week, putting water on it, putting water on, it, and then it would get warm and melt, and he'd do it again. It's like, give it up, man. I noticed he didn't do it this year. When someone gets too close to me in the line at the store, I turn and grab the invisible person on my shoulder and make them throw a motion and scream, get off me. It's just. <laughs> That'll give you space around you. <laughs> Well, that's not that's not good for me. I teach a woodworking class to kids on Wednesday night. Um, uh, well, guess what? You can bring us live on your woodworkings. Yeah, you bring all the night. kids. There you go. Then it would be cool too, Tom. And if you want us to show your students anything, we got a lot of expensive equipment. We can show your students something. Let us know. We can do something special for you. That actually yeah. really cool. Bring them all and give them all a laptop so they all count as a view. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they, I guarantee you they all have phones. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Invisible dog leash. <laughs> I, I had one of those as a kid. It's just a stiff rope. You walk with it. With a collar on the bottom? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, did anybody have one of those uh, little rockets you fill with water and then you pump it up and you, then it flies? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, rocket. Was, I thought you said yeah. rock. Oh, well, same difference because you'd be surprised oh. how many windows you can break. <laughs> this reminded me, the ultimate lawn darts, the original ones with a spike on the end. Oh, yeah, the jarks? I we had, had those. those. <laughs> yeah, we had those. Yeah. Then they decided that they were bad because kids were getting stabbed in the head. Like you, you, you take know, literally a thing, a dart that's <laughs> this big with a big point on the end of it, and you throw it in the air. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, to me as a kid, you could have gave all the expensive toys in the world but if you gave me a, a 35 cent, 45 cent matchbox, I was in heaven. I yeah. loved matchbox cars as a kid. I don't, I don't, I don't know how how old you are, Roger, but but I about a, I'd say maybe seven or eight years before I was in toy toy mode as a kid, there was Gilbert's Atomic Energy Lab. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Those yep. things are like major collector items now if you can find them. I had that. I had a uh, ChemCraft chemistry set, which all, all these chemicals that told you never to mix everything together to see what it do. So what do you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, those chemistry sets and uh, that stuff. The other things I had was uh, creepy crawlers. Oh, I had those. Made by Mattel and then a vacuum form. All these things that would burn the hell out of you. <laughs> So, you oh, yeah, know, they, they would never bad. have this. They would never have that stuff out now. Yeah, but the but How the atomic people... energy lab was was just crazy, right? It was a thing. It was like those 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 electronic labs that they used to make for kids, where you'd wire everything together. Except it was like radioactive material, yeah. right? And so not only did it come with a bunch of radioactive material, there was a card in in the box to send away to get more. Yeah. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Yes. Oh, yeah. Look, look at that. Google it. Gilbert's Atomic Energy Lab. Yeah. And well, if you can grew... find them in a box, like, because they come up in, like, people, you know, as, who are that age are now kind of dying of old age, right? So their kids go in and clean out their houses and they dig up in the attic and they find one of these things. They come up for sale every now and again and they're worth thousands. Yeah. I, obviously, hippos. I don't have mine anymore. Hungry Hippos. That was my old neighbors when I was growing up. Oh, you're I talking like... about the game. Yes. Yeah. I like Kerplunker. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You got to pull the, the, the sticks out and the marbles will fall. That was cool. Bouchy balls. Bouchy balls. Now, that reminds me of something they had when I was in high school called clackers, which were these two acrylic balls with a string on. And you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. I make remember them that. clack. And every once in a while, they'd blow up. Then you had yeah, shrapnel they'd... everywhere. They'd shatter, and you'd have these really sharp pieces of glass everywhere. I, yeah. Speaking of speaking of acrylic, I actually cut my finger today on a on just on a piece of acrylic. I broke it and cut the edge, and it was, 
It's like, holy cow. But that's what clackers would do. They'd cut out into all these really sharp edge things. Yeah. And they got banned fairly quickly. Mood mood rings was another one. Yeah, mood rings. That's yeah. funny. The all right, first, guys. The let's... first useful application for liquid crystals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Looks like we reached our time. It's 8 30. Um anything you guys want to say and close out? What'd you say? I said 10 30 on the coast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys. You know, it was kind of creative of us to come up with something goofy as a child that we all enjoy and funny and uh, everyone kind of having their um, their inputs on that. And uh, just a little while to bring you back in childhood, maybe some great memories you had or maybe some bad, but, you know, we all grew up. Yep, so, operation, um, I was good at that. Pet rock. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now they're flooded in since we're getting ready to end it. They're, they're here to get their... Yeah. Uh, comments and i was really surprised that no one had a chia pet but uh if yeah. walgreens still has them for just for uh, for the reason i may buy one stick it in the background that'd be just funny. set it up on top of your laser there <laughs> oh i had one of those oh no, that's 64 that yes. was that was modern technology compared to the yeah. first ones i had if you wanted to if you want to know what my very first computer was look for an rca cosmac vip this oh. thing was like a hex keypad Mine was a Timex Sinclair. Yeah, see, that was like third generation for me. Did you guys have a ColecoVision? No, I had an I had no. an original Atari. VCS. I had Atari, then Atari twenty six hundred, and the, the ColecoVision Atari. had to you could plug the Atari into the front of it. Oh yeah, hmm. yeah, it was before Atari. Yeah, yeah I had I the Atari I had was before they called it the VCS or the twenty six hundred. Mm -hmm. It was. But it was the same machine yeah. for about a year or two before. I think it got bought by somebody. Well, somebody took it over. Um, it it was. I still have it someplace. I wonder where it is. But it's probably worth money now. Yeah, funny times. Funny I old Ti ninety nine. They were they were a powerful computer for the day. Oh yeah, yeah. I had the the big expansion box that had the. There was a bus cable that was like four inches wide. They plugged the expansion box into the side yeah. for it. Yeah, it was like a like a, a I don't know what what bus standard it was, but it was one of the early ones. Yeah. Hubert, yeah. you guys remember that game? We had a jump. Hubert, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I actually got to run, so I got to put my son to bed. But uh, I had a good time tonight, guys. I thank you yeah, guys for fun. joining me, and I uh, thank for everyone in the. Uh, I didn't want one of our subscribers to join. We had some good laughs at the end. That was funny. Maybe at the end of our videos, we'll bring up something goofy like that to just kind of make everyone reminisce. The yep. bloopers. The bloopers. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys all. God bless. Appreciate yeah, everyone thanks. joining. Yeah, we'll see you all next Wednesday. Take care. Yep. Bye.